want to share this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians. Um, and it's chapter 1, and I'm reading from verses 1 through to 6. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus, who are faithful followers of Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give, out, give you grace and peace. And as we gather together today, may we know God's presence, his grace, and his peace. Verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he <coughs> excuse me, made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. In his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. And this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. And so we praise God for the glorious grace that he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Well, we turn to the Bible and we look at people like Paul and Nicodemus, the woman caught in adultery, Zacchaeus and the Samaritan woman at the well. We find that they all have one thing in common, and that is or was a very personal and very real encounter with the grace and the love of God in the person of Jesus Christ. It was an encounter that changed them forever. Jesus walked into their lives and he would never walk out of their lives and they would never be the same again. Those who were despised, demeaned, mocked and rejected in the world became beloved, enriched, honored, accepted and chosen by God. And friends, if you're a Christian today, know this. That you are beloved, enriched, honored, accepted, and chosen by God. The same opportunity goes for all those who do not know Jesus as their personal Savior. And today is an opportunity for you to open your lives and hearts and encounter Jesus. That your life can be changed forever as well. I think one of the worst things for a child at school or someone in the workplace is not to be accepted and not to be chosen as part of a team or part of a group. All of us want to accept and don't we? We all want to be part of something and not left out. Well, the hard truth of it is that sometimes we are accepted and sometimes we're not. However, this is not the case with God. He loves people who are lost, and he loves those who are saved. If you have not ex been accepted, as uh, the King James Version puts Ephesians 1.6, in the beloved, the beloved is waiting for you with open arms to come to him today. And if you have strayed for whatever reason from the beloved, he's waiting for you with open arms to come to him today. Now, once we're born again, we're given the gift of eternal life. And as Paul puts it in verse 3, because we are united with Christ, and then listen to these words, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. For most of us, we realize that life here on earth will not always be blessed. In fact, at times, and we are going through some of those times right now, aren't we? It seems downright awful. But circumstances, I want us all to realize this, circumstances here have no effect on the spiritual blessings that are ours in Jesus Christ. Paul elaborated on this in chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, where he writes, But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much 
that even though we were dead, that is spiritually dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. You see, Jesus' resurrection validates his salvatory work on the cross. And then Paul, to continue with Paul, it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. As we gather together here this morning, as a church collectively and as individuals, if we belong to Christ, we are united with Christ. We sit here, no matter what our situation is right at the moment, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. And another thing, in his presence, we are beloved, we're enriched, we're accepted, we belong. What a wonderful thought. So what does all this mean? Some of the deepest human longings are to be loved, to be understood, to be accepted, to belong. Here's a wake-up call for us all. The deepest of human needs are not satisfied in any material possessions or positions of influence and power, but by God. Here's the good news. What can be so elusive to us here is found when through the love and the grace of God, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The truth is that one may be rejected by people for various reasons, but that does not lock us out of his grace and love and acceptance. Let me read words that, I, that, uh, that were spoken by A.W. Tozer. Jesus Christ knows the worst about you. Nonetheless, he is the one who loves you the most. Let me repeat that. Whether we're unsaved or whether we're saved, Jesus Christ knows the worst about you. Nonetheless, he is the one who loves you the most. The Apostle Paul expressed it like this in Romans 5 verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. Now, more amazing than that revelation is the fact that God loved us and chose us in Christ before he even created the world to be, and listen to these words, holy and without fault in his eyes. Here's what Paul said in Romans 8 verse 29. For God knew his people, that's you and me, in advance, and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Verse 5 of our reading said, or says, God decided in advance, in advance to adopt, adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You give God great pleasure he called you and adopted you into his family because he wanted to do that you see we've been chosen by, by god but we've been chosen by god for a purpose and that is to become like his son he chose us and adopted us into his family we belong we are not left outside his family we are brought right into the fa inner family circle and, the, and this is all according to his purposes and plans for us. Don't miss the fact here that God did not choose us as a last minute option, as can sometimes be the case when teams are being, uh, when teams are being chosen um, by various sports bodies um, or teams are being put together in the workplace to achieve various tasks. You remember, I certainly do, how it feels standing in a school group hoping to be chosen for the first team, whether it's rugby um, or whatever, and getting relegated to the second team 
And perhaps one wasn't even chosen at all. Now, did you notice what Paul said? God not only decided beforehand to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. This is something that he wanted to do. And it gave God pleasure to do so. Why is it we find this so hard to accept at times? Well, we look in the mirror, we reflect on our lives and we wonder, because we know ourselves so well, how can I give God great pleasure? Doesn't he expect perfection? You see, we all know our faults, we all know our failures, we all know where we fall short and we wonder. Even when we disappoint God, friends, he does not stop loving us. He looks at us where we are, and we still give him great pleasure. And here's why. Because he knows that even though we lose sight of the fact and become discouraged, the good work that he started in us, he is going to see through to completion. God sees us where we are, but he also sees the finished product. As Paul indicates in Ephesians 2, we are a masterpiece in the making. Now, according to his plans, God placed us in a church, which is called the family of God. He did this so that the church would reflect what it is like to be part of the family of God, to belong and to be accepted. Now, as much as any family is not perfect, neither is the church. I'm sure you're all familiar with the following. If you find the perfect church, don't go there because you'll spoil it. However, remember, we're all individually and collectively a work in process. In the church, we need to work through our differences and disagreements in a loving and understanding way that will honor God and that honors one another. The church must be a place where, in spite of our differences, people are not rejected but loved, understood, accepted, belong, and where people are encouraged to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God and in their relationship with him, with one another, and also with a world that desperately needs the hope that we have to share with them through the gospel of God. In Ephesians 4, Paul writes to God's family in Ephesus and he says, and I'm reading from verse 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead the life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace for there is one body just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future i don't have to elaborate on that paul makes things very clear now remember god never waited for us individually or collectively as a church to live up to expectations before choosing and accepting us that can be the case with people. It is not the case with God. He comes to us where we are. And he comes to us as we are. Another thing. He doesn't intend to leave you or I where we are or as we are. God is going to transform us. God is going to change us. God's purposes for us are much bigger than any dream we could have. For ourselves we may feel far from the uh, from holy or being faultless we may even dis despair and i've been there of becoming what god wants us to be but the bible assures us as you have heard me say so often that god will complete the good work he started in us praise god may we as his church <coughs> excuse me Look at each other in a different way and not expect others to be like me. All of us are in different places in our walk with God. All of us have been given 
different gifts and different abilities to use for God. Let us look at one another and realize that God has not finished with any of us yet as individuals or as a church because he is still working out his plans and purposes for each of us. And he will complete the good work he started in us. Once we were separated from God, however, that changed when through grace and salvation that is ours in Jesus, God became our father, which gives us the privilege of having Jesus as our brother, an awesome, majestic brother who is to be honored and worshiped. Because he's not only our brother, he is our savior and our king. When we wander from him, we, he will, like the father of the prodigal son, be waiting to welcome us back with open arms. If you're waiting to come back to the, uh, the father or waiting for the, uh, the father to return to the father because you've strayed, today is your opportunity to do so. Like any good nurturing father, God will watch over, guide, and keep us in his prayer, in his care, sorry. And I could elaborate so much more on that. People may abandon us or reject us in our times of struggle or when we fall and fail, when we need people most. But God does not abandon us. So no matter where you find yourself right now, take Courage and let hope arise within you. Let, along with the author of Hebrews, who instructs us that we can be content with what we have because God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let us confidently declare, the Lord is my helper. <clears throat> I will not fear what can man do to me. Well, man can hurt me. And hurt me deeply. Man can reject me. Man can change his attitude towards me. Man can give up on me. But Jesus will not. He will discipline us and correct us when we go wrong. But he will not give up on us. Jesus never gave up on or rejected Peter when Peter denied him <clears throat> to preserve his own life. You remember the, the, the incident after Jesus was arrested. The Lord was still at work with Peter and still had work for Peter to do and work to do in Peter. The Lord is still with you and I. He is still at work in us and he has work for you and I to do. The fisherman became the great apostle because Jesus never gave up on him. Brennan Manning, the author of Ruthless, Ruthless Trust, had this to say. When we get waylaid from our walk with God by busyness, depression, family problems, or worse, God does not abandon us. With all his failures, that is Manning, and his struggles that could have been overshadowing his life and affected his ministry, Manning knew what he was talking about. You see, Manning was an alcoholic, someone who struggled through his life and ministry with alcoholism. But God never gave up on him. And Manning, in spite of his continuing struggle with alcoholism, could not stop pursuing God. If you folks want to know, and I want to know what life, real life looks like for God's people and how God works in the lives of his people, read the word of God. It paints a very different picture to life from the name it and claim it prosperity gospel. I think as Christians, we all come to the realization that we are saved by grace and not by the works that we do. However, what we sometimes forget is that we are sustained and enabled by God's grace and that God's grace is sufficient for us in all situations. And we re then revert to works in an attempt to please God. The Apostle Paul never lost sight of God's love and grace. That's why he never gave up or crumbled in his Christian walk or his ministry. 
we start comparing ourselves our, and our churches to others, and we can become discontent and unhappy. When that happens, we tend to revert to works to gain God's favor. Now, I'm not saying that we must not work or that we must not strive for excellence. God has called us so that we can work for him because he has worked for us too. And an excellent God deserves excellence from us. As we work for God, we cannot do this in our own flesh or in our own power. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Now, when we come to realize that what we achieve is all by God's grace, it humbles one. In fact, I stand in awe of the grace and the love of God as I look back on my life and ministry. Friends, God's grace is not cheap, and we should never cheapen it. In a devotional called A Prayer to Remind You of Your Worth, Julie Sun writes, I believed I should be the greatest mom, the perfect wife, the best friend, the hardest worker, the one who had all the answers and cared enough to respond to everyone's requests. I bought into the lie that success equals validation. It was beginning to strangle me. Then the thought snuck in that my worth isn't something to be found or earned. It's innate because of who God created me to be. It's innate because of the grace of God. Each of us is created in the image of God, remarkably and wonderfully made. We don't need to prove ourselves and earn our worth, she says. Her devotional was based on Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Next time you look in the mirror, friend, when you look into the mirror, say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And say to God, your works are wonderful. Because I know that full well through your word. We have to ask ourselves today. Are we trying to prove our worth? Let us embrace the truth in Jesus Christ that we are already worthy. And that, my friends my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, is grace. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you this morning. No matter where we find ourselves in our relationship with you, with one another, or in our situation of life, and we come and we open our hearts and minds afresh to you and say we love you, we, we come, Lord, amazed at your acceptance of us where we are. And Lord, for those who have wondered, I pray that your love will draw them back to yourself. For those, Lord, who are feeling isolated and lonely, that you will give them a great sense of your presence and belonging to your family. I thank you, Lord, that we are able to not only be saved through your grace, but also to rely on your grace as we walk our Christ and work out our Christian lives here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for accepting us in the beloved. We praise you for making us fearfully and wonderfully. We thank you for your glorious grace that you poured out on us through Jesus Christ, your dear Son and our dear Savior. Amen and amen. Friends, I, um, amen is going to...